Hello class, we continue our discussion on Tom and Hank. So, I have cleaned up some of the work and we have the opportunity cost table, right? And we have decided that Tom has comparative advantage in fishing because three-fourths is greater than two and Hank has comparative advantage in getting coconuts because one half is less than four thirds. So the next logical step is deciding that we're gonna specialize. Specialization means that you're gonna focus on one type of production. So instead of fishing and getting coconuts, now you're just gonna fish or you're just gonna get coconuts. You're just specializing. Similarly, it's what, it's what students do when they get to college, right? They decide what they're better at and so they major in that subject. Later on, once they fin finish their degrees, they're gonna be able to trade with their services using the specialization that they chose, right? So we have the very foundations of trade here, of trade, right? Where you specialize so that you can trade. So, very simple conclusion. We have Tom specializing in fishing and Hank in coconuts. So, simple. And now, Tom has all the fish, Hank has all the coconuts, and now they can trade. So, the only question that is left is, how much are they gonna trade? Right? So, what do we mean by this? It's very simple. Since Tom has all the fish, he's gonna require coconuts, right? So Tom is gonna go to Hank and, propo and propose a trade. Or Hank is gonna go to Tom and propose a trade. Now the only thing that they have to agree on is the terms, the terms of trade, okay? And for this, we have to think of ratios. For example, Tom might say, I'll give you one fish, right? One fish for three coconuts. Now I want you to think about this trade. Is this a good trade? Tom wants three coconuts so that he can give Hank one fish. The answer is no, this is not a good trade. And for that, we have to look at the numbers, right? So remember that Hank is the one that has the coconuts. So we have to look at this number, the two. The proposed trade was one fish for three coconuts. Now, obviously, Hank will not accept this because Hank will reason that instead of paying three coconuts for one fish, Hank is better off fishing himself. Why? Because it only costs him two coconuts to produce one fish. Why would he pay a higher price than what it costs him to produce that good, right? Similarly, right, we can look at the other side of the trade, right? Tom will not pay a higher price than four thirds, right? So this is where we have to focus on determining what the terms of trade is, right? So if you compare them side to side, all you have to look for is numbers that land, for example, between three fourths and two and four thirds and one half. So I'm gonna give you a second to think about that. What is a number that lands between three fourths and a two and four thirds and a one half. All right. Let's do the first one. What is a number, a simple number, a whole number, that lands between two and three fourths? Well, a one. Right? 
a 1 is right between 3 fourths and 2. All right? So let's go to the next one, 4 thirds and 1 half. What is a number that lands between 4 thirds and 1 half? Well, the answer is also a 1. So we have a 1 to 1 ratio. Now, do we have to always have whole numbers? No, I just chose whole numbers in this example so that it's just simple to see. Right? So a one to one ratio means that we can trade one fish for one coconut or two fish for two coconuts or 10 fish for 10 coconuts. The ratio is always one to one, right? So that is any, any terms of trade that is gonna have a one to one ratio is gonna be a good trade for both. Now, let's make these numbers a little bit higher. So like I said, we're just gonna make them, instead of one to one, right, we're gonna make them 10 to 10. That's still a one to one ratio. And to show you why this is a good trade, let me go to the graph, okay? So let's remember who has all the fish, right? All the fish belong right now because of specialization. All the fish belong to Tom. So we're going to start right here. Right? So if I'm going to give 10 fish for 10 coconuts, that means that Tom is now going to have 30 fish. Right? And remember, he received. 10 coconuts for this trade. So, where is this gonna land? Where is this gonna put Tom? It's gonna put him somewhere right there. This is Tom, right? Because now Tom has 30 fish and 10 coconuts, right? That is what Tom is consuming now. Not production, right? Now we're consuming because now we're trading. Now, let's look, let's do a similar analysis for Hank. Let's remember that Hank started here because Hank has all the coconuts. He has 20 coconuts and no fish. So let's look at the trade, 10 for 10. So Hank is going to move to 10, right? Because he's giving up 10 coconuts. And he's going to receive 10 fish, right? So where does that put him? right there so this is Hank consumption now now we mean Hank's consumption and Tom's consumption this is only after they do a trade right after trade that is very important in this example. The only way that we can draw Hank's consumption and Tom's consumption outside of the PPF is after trade. This leads us to the final topic, games of trade, right? Before trade, Hank could only produce anything that was in this blue line, right? Hank could have picked any point on that blue line. And the same thing goes for Tom, right? Tom could have picked any point for consumption on this green line. But notice what happens after trade, that they're gonna, both of them are gonna be able to consume outside their PPF, right? Not produce, they're gonna be able to consume. So think about reality, think about the real world right we can go to any supermarket and find asian foods mexican foods foods from europe foods from africa foods from anywhere in the world right if you have a good enough supermarket right 
we don't produce those things here in the United States, but we can consume them. So this is the this is the idea of gains from trade. Now, you can also think about it numerically, right? There's going to be a numerical increase in the consumption, right, that we can do compared to our PPFs, right? So that is it for comparative advantage and trade. You can you can take these same ideas and think about them as they apply not only for individuals, for countries.